right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so for the first game of uh, of this journey, I'm going to try one that is actually really easy to play. Uh, and we're going to do some button shy games this week. We'll also do a couple of uh, tiny epic games, but we're going to start off with uh, Food Chain Island. Uh, Food Chain Island I'm starting off with because it is really easy to play. We'll actually play a number of uh, games overall. Uh, I expect this will go pretty quickly. We're going to... I'm also trying to get some idea of how the focus is looking. Because I can't seem to do anything without making little minor tweaks here and there. Alright. Alright, so if you're joining me, we're going to play some Food Chain Island. We're going to only... We're only going to be on for about like 20 minutes doing this. It's not going to take that long to play through some games. Uh, we might actually be able to play through three times. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to try to do a complete, when I do these board games, I'm going to try to go completely from in the box to setup so that you actually get to watch the setup as well. So the great thing about Button Shy games is that they do these little wallet games. These fit in your wallet and everything is included. Uh, there are some expansions to this that will fit in here. Um, I do not have those expansions. All I have is just the base game. Uh, let's see, we've got ourselves, the rule book, and then we have our sea animals. Sea animals are special animals that you get to use twice during the game, each one once. And then you have 16 cards, and each of the cards has a value of 0 through 15 on it. Uh, each of them has a special ability that activates when they eat, uh, and so on. And what we do... We're doing the base game. That is a lot of light on that spot right there, so we're going to move that over there. If you are joining me in the chat, uh, please feel free to say hi. I'm going to move into position here. We could probably zoom in a little bit, huh? Hi, LeBron Swanson. I'm going to try to do a little uh, zooming in so that the things are a little bit more visible. Okay, so the idea of this is that we're going to deal out these 16 cards into a 4x4 array. There are some other arrangements that you can use to when you're playing this game. Uh, the idea is that you are then going to have animals eat each other. Fun. Hopefully, this will cover everything. I need to zoom out a little bit, apparently. There we go. Now, the great thing is, uh, the, the way that this game works is that animals can eat another animal if it is within three below it. Uh, so, for example... The polar bear here is a 15. It can eat 14, 13, or 12. Uh, 13 being the gator, 12 being the tiger, 14 being the lion. Uh, the plant is a zero, can't eat anything. Uh, you can eat something uh, by moving adjacently, so you can eat that in that direction or that direction. In some cases, um, there are some restrictions on that or things that get applied. Um, but generally, you eat things by eating the thing that's adjacent to it. You have two sea animals here that allow you a special ability once per game. The whale uh, just simply moves something to another space uh, so that makes it easier for you to eat with that animal. The shark has an ability, and I tried looking up for a clarification on this. You may move one animal, uh, move an animal one space to eat an adjacent animal of any lower value. Now, I think what this is intended for is to allow you to have an animal eat anything below it regardless of distance. So this 15 could eat the eight, for example. Uh, which helps if you have some chains that you are trying to connect that you can't otherwise. The debate is whether or not you can first move the animal one space. So, for example, if I had the seven, seven out here, could I move 14 this way and then down to eat the seven? That's the, that's the great debate. You are not beholden to sticking within this 4x4 four four grid, by the way. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted to... Uh, one of the animals, I think the bat, has the ability to go anywhere after it's been after it eats. Uh, that's the six right here. So if you wanted to, you could go six, 
five eats five, and then you could just move the bat to wherever, as long as it's I think adjacent to any other thing. The idea is to get three or fewer cards remaining at the end. Uh, you can go one, two, or three, and there's a special. Somebody pointed this out on a stream that I was watching. The uh, if you end up with two animals left, you are the accidental matchmaker. Uh, one animal left is an eco ecosystem expert, and three animals left is island intern. Uh, so the goal is, I'm going to play three games of this, and I'm going to try to get six animals total by the end of each one. And what's great is, you could actually take this configuration right here and solve it as a puzzle. Like, this is a solve, like, you can try to do your best with this uh, arrangement and see if you can actually get a score of one with it. Uh, so looking through... Uh, a lot of our one, twos, and threes are up here, which is nice. This lizard, uh, the power of it is to discard any one unstacked animal. And I feel like that could be really helpful um, because it allows you to get rid of a number of cards here that you would not otherwise be able to eat. Uh, looking through some of the other things, this zero is kind of in a bad spot. Uh, the All the things that can eat it are up here. Uh, this 15 is in a pretty good spot. The 15, however, can't eat directly after moving. So you could go 15 to 12, then 12 to 13, or 15 to 13. The idea, however, is that you want to try to connect as much as you can. And usually you want to start lower uh, to build up. Uh, but looking briefly at this. So I think the two cards that I really want to get rid of are this, this 14 and this 0. Neither of those are really that useful. I will point out that this eight, the next, uh, the raccoon's power, next turn if the predator eats prey valued at exactly one less, discard any one unstacked animal could be really useful. Looking through. Okay, I think I see some of what I want to start doing. Uh, this always feels like a logic puzzle that I'm, I'm going to poorly execute here. So I think what I'm going to do first is... I am going to go f four to one. Lizard is going to eat the ant. And now I get to discard any one unstacked animal. So I will discard the plant in a crappy place otherwise. I will now use the raccoon to eat the snake. And on the next turn, if the predator eats prey valued at one less, discard any on one unstacked animal. I will go to the lizard eating the mouse. The lizard eats the mouse. Now I get to discard one because of that. And then because I met the raccoon's thing, that will kick in as well. So I can now get rid of two more. I'm actually going to get rid of the spider because he's sort of stuck over here on his own. And I think... I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the lynx as well. Whether that's good or not, I have no idea. Uh, the bat's going to kick in. The bat is going to eat the rat, and the bat, uh, after the bat eats, move it to any other space. I will go ahead and move it to the lizard. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Bat is going to eat the lizard. I think that was the lizard that I was eating. Yep. Uh, and then move to one other space. It will move here. Do I want to? I don't want to do that. I think. Yeah, I think I actually want to move here. And then I'm going to have the fox eat the raccoon. Next turn, the predator must move diagonally. Eat six can eat nine. Uh, I'm 
trying to think of how I can do this. I'm almost, I feel like I've, I've almost got it. Yeah, okay, I think I do. I think I do. 13, Gator's going to eat the tiger. Next turn, instead of moving the predator over the prey, slide the prey under the predator. We're going to get rid of the wolf this way. It's going to go underneath the fox. Next turn, the predator must move diagonally to eat. We're going to go ahead and kick in our whale, which allows us to move to any other spot. So we're going to move the 13 here. 14, next turn, the predator must eat uh, prey valued exactly one less. That's going to work for the polar bear over the lion. Next turn, the polar bear cannot eat. However, we're going to use our shark ability to override that, where the move an animal one space to eat an adjacent animal of any lower value. Polar bear eats the fox, and we have done it. We are, we've got one. We've got one so far. Uh, I'm going to pull up a little thing that I had before, which was golf score for a previous game. And we're going to go ahead and edit that so that we've got a one. So it always takes a moment. I, it gets I, I like Streamlabs, but it does pause frequently, which gets a little frustrating. Come on, come on. Yeah, it's just not it's just not responding here. So let's go ahead and hide that. I'll just have you remember that I am, also I should make sure that that is, uh, the chat box is showing. So that is, uh, that is one round. We are, have one animal at the start of it. That is the best we can do. We're going to try to do this with five ounces. We need to make sure that we have all 10. We'll go ahead and try a different shape this time. Uh, one of the unusual shapes here. Uh, let's go with, um. Let's go with this sort of like this first one. So we got two at the top there. Hopefully this will all fit. Then we're going to go four. This is already looking ugly. Not even sure if that's visible. So I will zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Probably slide that up a little bit. So looking at this first, uh, there's an obvious pattern uh, that I can follow. The 210 can just knock that right out. Uh, however, that doesn't really help me a whole lot. I kind of want to have, so the thing is, like, I don't like losing the bat early on. The bat is really helpful for moving around and cleaning up, like, all the little bits and pieces that you end up with. But I do want to have this swap the ability, swap the location in two cards, because I think that's going to be very useful. If I can get the snake, if this lizard and lion swapped, I think I'm going to be sitting in a pretty, pretty good situation. So... How do I want to do this? So I think the seven is going to eat the bat against my better judgment. And then that allows me to swap the location of two cards. So let's do that first.
Now I could go on a little run here. I could go four, two, one, zero and discard three other cards. And I think I want that to be this little thing up here. I think that's actually a really good idea. So, but the first thing that I have to do is I have to do a 15 to 14 to capture that. Now next turn, Polar Bear cannot eat. Uh, so then I'm gonna go ahead and kick in the Lizard, who's going to get rid of the mouse up here. Then I can move the Polar Bear now, or now I can move the Polar Bear. And now I can use the Lizard power again. Uh, nope, I can't really do that because that's going to leave me with no way to eat that plant. But what I can do is this. I can eat the plant and then move this down here. Use the ant ability to move one animal one to three spaces. I can now go back to the polar bear again, which can eat 12. I can use the lizard again. That will get to eat another animal. We'll make that the... Uh, I th it doesn't really matter. I think it's going to be the nine that we get rid of. I think I've messed this up. I think I had a really good pot. I think I had a really good thing that I could have done here. The 11 can eat the 8 and then move back one. Ah, uh, yeah, I've, I've messed this up, haven't I? What we can do to try to minimize the damage here is we'll use the shark ability to go ahead and eat the, have the lynx eat the rat. Um, no, that's not, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea at all. Oh boy, I have messed this up. I am sort of at wit's end as to what to do. So I will go ahead and use the whale card actually to move this to just simply here. Um, let's move that there. We'll use this to swap the location of two cards. We'll use this to swap 15 and 10. Uh, we'll go ahead and use this seven. Uh, we now have to swap the location of two cards. We'll go ahead and use that to swap the 10 and the seven. 
we'll go ahead and use the 10 to jump on the 7. Now this should make us have to jump over a space, however we'll use the shark ability instead to kick in and override that, and so we're left with two stacks that we can't do anything with. So not too bad, we're at, at two. All right, so that is, we are now down two games. We're gonna play one more. We're at three animals out of a possible best score of two, which is not too bad. And we'll do one more, one more configuration. We'll try for this weird one that's got two holes in it. That looks ridiculously difficult. Give one ripple shuffle. All right, so it's gonna be five. Do that in the upper left here. One of the trickiest things about this is just trying to figure out where you're going to be with each card by the time that you end the movement, because sometimes that can really mess you up. I would imagine most chess players would probably find this a really easy game to play, because it is just a matter of looking ahead and seeing what you can do with what you have. All right. Um, so first thing, I'm going to just try to go through this as quickly as I can. Uh, Lizard is going to eat spider, and then I get to discard an unstacked animal. We're going to discard the plant. Uh, plant Bat is going to eat mouse, which allows it to go somewhere else. We're going to move it over here, and then it's going to eat the rat. And then we're going to get rid of, have that move up here. And I know that you can't quite see that, so my apologies. Snake is going to eat the bat, so it'll be a little bit off screen there. We can then swap the placement of two other animals. And I think I want to swap this one and eight. Just quickly, again, just quickly sort of moving through. Uh, we're going to use the whale, kept that in now. We're going to move the ant up to here, and the lizard is going to eat it. Uh, that means we get to discard one more one more animal. We're going to get rid of this lynx down here that's sort of stuck on its own. Uh, we're going to use the shark's ability to kick in. Uh, we're going to get let it you do a eat anything that's a, as long as it's adjacent for the fox to eat the lizard. Fox will then. Next turn, the predator must move diagonally to eat. So we'll get that nine there. Uh, 12 can jump on that. Uh, next one, the predator must move two spaces to eat. So the polar bear can eat that. Uh, the polar bear does not get to activate. Means I think we're kind of screwed in terms of what else we can do. I think we're going to end this with four, where we'll be off by one for the goal. Because either I can go 14 eating the fox, but then that leaves me no valid moves after that. I could go 15 eats 14, but then... Yeah, actually, that'll do it. That'll that'll be it. 15 will eat 14. Uh, then 12 will eat 9. And we're left with 3 that we can't do anything about. So there we go. We, we finished with a score of 6, which is what I was hoping for. Uh, that, is, uh, that is Food Chain Island. That is game number 1 out of... Game number 1 out of, uh, hopefully, 365 games. Uh, we set ourselves a goal of 6. Uh, animals that we wanted to have left over. We did one, two, and three for the three games. Uh, so I'm going to count that as a win. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you for those of you who stuck around. Um, this is uh, sort of an inaugural thing, so hopefully it worked. And with that, enjoy the rest of your day. 
Yeah, I love. I really like this one. It is, it is a remarkably quick game to just set up and play. Like we we did what three games in thirty minutes. This feels to me like if you had a deck of cards instead, like you might play a regular game of solitaire. But if you had this, you could just do, you know, some rattle off something real quick. There is an expansion that has birds in it and more sea creatures as well as other animals, uh, and has you on a bigger island. Uh, I definitely like button shy games. I'm planning on getting a few more of those uh, throughout the course of the year. They're not too expensive. Uh, I do recommend them. Uh, some of the other games that we'll be playing over the course of the next week, uh, we've got Rove here, Rage More, which is a sort of a, a hero villain game, and Death Valley, which I still do not understand the instructions of, so that'll be fun. Uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off. Shower, everybody. <laughs>